Don't write a book before you see the full scope of your journey. That book you in 10 years will be a lie. No, don't write. You will need to recall the book back. When you enter in the, into the fullness, because the book will look like darkness. When you journey accurately for another 10 years. I see people going to the printers early. They are knocking the doors of the printers. Meanwhile, they have not yet taken root in the navigation. Every son of the kingdom of God is going to walk through pathways in the spirit under the influence of the grace of, of, of the spirit of grace and supplication in order for him to be able to lay hold of his inheritance. And you see the flesh will be weakened. You see, I found out in my work with God that the things that the flesh likes, the Holy Ghost does not like. And the thing that the Holy Ghost likes, the flesh does not like. So you need to get used to the things the Holy Ghost likes and stay there. It will weaken and paralyze your flesh and your flesh will no longer have the authority to suggest any line of action to you forever. So we came up with this product, 10 hours. Most people don't know the benefit of staying in God's presence and exercising your spirit for long. I found out we were taught prayer, we were not taught long prayers. And I am a researcher and I can tell you with authority that there are dimensions of God you will never touch until you tune your spirit to pray for long. And when you pray for long, you cannot succeed except you are praying with the energy that comes from the spirit of God. So the spirit of grace and supplication comes upon your life to galvanize you for a trip in the Holy Ghost. There are times where you will need to pray for long in order for you to see something. Then the lamp will show you parts of your map. The reason why many of you are stuck is that you did not have the impetus to travel in prayer sufficiently beyond your current location of civilization. And because of that, the lamp could not unveil to you the next phase of the journey. So you are stuck in transit. Your, your advancement has been truncated. Not because God doesn't want to supply. Not because God doesn't have all sufficiency to make available to you. But you were not willing to operate under the influence of the spirit of grace and supplication. I traveled in prayer. I did 18 hours for three days. I'm, I'm talking about 17 years ago. And in 17 years ago, I saw that we have a TV station. When I said it to the people around that time, they felt I was lunatic. You see, it, it, it was a lamp that gave me the illumination that occasioned my sight. My sighting of the station. When the time came for it to come, but we, we documented it, even though people didn't believe in it, we, we documented it. When the time came for the station, I hope you know we're on TV now. We're on TV in many people's houses across Africa and the Middle East, as I'm talking now. You will never know the pathway that you are supposed to journey in order for you to lay hold on your inheritance. Every son of Abraham cannot fulfill his destiny at home. He must travel. Yeah. Oh my God. Are you with me? That is, that is the pattern that was established in the life of Abraham. And the place you are traveling to doesn't have a map. Everyone will need to use the instrumentality of the spirit of supplication and the spirit of grace in order to enter into bits and pieces of that map so that you are keeping step with the Holy Ghost and navigating to the terminals where you will lay hold on your inheritance. If at any point in time that journey truncates and you come under the cloud of confusion, confusion is not supposed to be a Christian experience. Confusion. Please preach, preach for me. Confusion is not supposed to be the experience of a Christian. The moment you come under the cloud of confusion, it's an indication of the fact that you have lost alignment, lost touch, 
with the spirit of grace and supplication. Embedded in that enablement is the ability to travel to places in the spirit. As astronauts explore space, that's how we are called to explore God. And when you begin to explore God, he begins to show you parts of the map. Parts of the map that has to do with your own unique journey under the auspices of the Holy Ghost. And for me, part of the map was to be a global missionary. But I never knew. Uh, 24 years ago, I never knew that I was going to be preaching from nation to nation. Never knew. I just, I knew I was going to be a preacher. And I was looking forward to being a local champion. You see, you will adopt an insufficient understanding of your calling if you don't come under this illumination to show you the, don't talk too much. In fact, don't even write books. Don't write a book before you see the full scope of your journey. That book you in 10 years will be a lie. No, don't write. You will need to recall the book back when you enter in the, into the fullness because the book will look like darkness when you journey accurately for another 10 years. I see people going to the printers early. They are knocking the doors of the printers. Meanwhile, they have not yet taken root in the navigation. Every son of the kingdom of God is going to walk through pathways in the spirit under the influence of the grace of, of, of the spirit of grace and supplication in order for him to be able to lay hold of his inheritance. Turn your Bible quickly to the book of Job chapter 28 as I begin to attempt to round up. I will mention the other spirits for you. Because I, I, people have been sending me text messages. But, but trust me, I'm going to finish the rest in other services, other teachings, all right? Even, yeah, yeah, I'll finish. So you'll get the whole, if there is any message I want to preach in my life, it's the one I'm preaching now. So I'm going to do the rest in other services. Just stay tuned. You, I will finish it. Okay, but I will mention um, the rest of um, the lamps. Notice that each lamp has a unique aspect of your life that it unveils. And that will determine, that is what will inform how far you will travel. If the spirit of adoption, that lamp is not on, you are going to be defeated inside. You will become a creature that is subject to mind bending. You will not have the necessary security that you need to be happy in spite of the situation. Because sometimes when you pray, God does not change the situation. God changes you. He changes you and bestows the grace on your life so that you have the capacity to survive the situation. It's not every time he changes it. But in the midst of the situation, as you receive equipment to survive it, you will know inside of you the reason why you can get by is because of Abba. So it doesn't matter whether a legion rises against me. I'm more at home when you fight me. I'm more at home. I know my Abba. His capacity. His capacity on, on, on the war front. I know it. Hallelujah. And if you have not received the spirit of grace and supplication, it will impact on how you navigate on that spiritual pathway. It's not a physical pathway. Are you there? Because God says you will go to a land that I will show you. Even though the land is physical, your means of arriving there will not be physical. It will come through a spiritual map. And the illumination that will give you insight into that map is what we call the spirit of grace and supplication. The more you delay your prayer journeys, the more you delay your entrance into that economy. So the next time you see the caption in London, 10 hours, jump at it. Because that's how the wise are made. You will see danger coming to hit your business in the next 12 months. And if you press, you will see the person through whom the danger will come. Sack him before the danger comes. 
Oh, yeah, okay. When I say that, you say, hmm. May you, may you walk with the light of that lamp in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Job chapter 28, beginning from verse 7. If you travel on the path of intercession, you begin to see the map. Then you know what you were raised to do. You may not like it initially. Say, I'm not, I'm not capable. I'm not sufficient to carry out this task. It's not about you. It's about the workings of the energy. If you labor with God, God will convince you. Because the Bible says it is him that worketh in us. His workshop is on your inside. And he's working to the end that you come to terms with his desires for your life. And the moment you accept his desires for your life, he gives you the capacity through his grace to do that which he desires for you. So it is God that worketh in us, both to will and to do according to his own good pleasure. And in that scripture, you will notice you are not mentioned. It's God Walking, you know, it is God that wills or God that gives us desires. It is God that gives us the grace to accomplish his desires for us. He doesn't consult you. There is no grace for you to accomplish your ambition in that economy. But there's grace for you to accomplish the will of God. The grace of God doesn't exist to power anything that is of the flesh. And that's why sin, are you there? So grace does not support sin. Grace is there to give you the enablement to accomplish the will of God. So Abraham needed to stick with God in order for him to know the pathways to walk, in order for him to arrive at the location where he will get his inheritance. I was in the city of Kano. Those were the days we were doing like six hours prayers almost on a daily basis. And there was a bright lamp of illumination that was held up for us in the spirit. It was in one of those prayer meetings that I saw that God was sending me to Makoti. The place of your primary assignment is Makoti. Makoti is a physical place, but the way by which I got here was by a spiritual encounter. That was the story of Abraham. He was going to a physical place, but he was going to arrive at the place through a spiritual what? Encounter. That's how I married my wife. It was, it's a physical woman, but I came to connect with her through what? An encounter. So all sons of Abraham will need to navigate through spiritual pathways in order for them to arrive at their inheritance. If you lack the light of this lamp, you will not be able to fulfill destiny because you always be at the wrong places at the right time, doing the wrong things, expending your energy to accomplish ambitions when the vision of God is not yet complete. When you are old and you look back, you will see the graph of your travels has been from darkness to utter darkness to gross darkness. Meanwhile, the path of the just is supposed to be like a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. You will not lose your way in the name of Jesus Christ. So I round up with this scripture. Job 28, verse 7. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, which the vulture's eyes have not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lions pass by it. He put it forth his hands upon the rock, he overturned the mountains by the roots. He caught it out rivers among the rocks and his eyes see at every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But the question still stands, where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Four creatures were mentioned here. The fowl, the fowl is detailed as it scratches with his rake fingers in search of things. The vulture is mentioned. 
It has positional advantage and compound eyes. Say, even the vulture himself cannot find this path. To the lion. As it journeys through the pride lands of the forest, he has not been able to find that path. The young lions, the cubs, the routes by which they navigate in order to receive training for hunting, they have not seen that path. Because the path is not in the natural. The path is in the supernatural. That's the path that sons are called to walk upon. It is only the light of that lamp that can show you where that path is. I'm talking about a place that angels do not know. So an angel cannot come to you and say, please, let's go there. If not, an angel would have helped Abraham. Only sons can know that part. And it comes when the spirit of grace and supplication comes upon your life. And I hope you know what a path is. It's a road that only one man can walk part time. That's how your destiny looks like. No son of Abraham will remain at home. All of them will travel through prophetic pathways. Ways that are revealed by God. And the object of their journey is that they are in search of their inheritance. You will not miss your way. Today I'm connecting with you because I walked on a certain path. If I had not walked on that path, we would not be here today. And for those of you online, I am saying to you that there is a path which no foul know it. Only the lamp of supplication can bring sufficient illumination for you to discern the path of destiny. Oh my God. It shines on me shines on me <laughs> it shines on me it shines on me it's your grace so that light that comes by grace will shine on you tonight it shines on me <laughs> it shines on me your grace he shines on me he shines on me <laughs> he shines on me is your grace he shines on me Shines on me, your grace is shines on. Should I tell you something? If you are not using this lamp, the people you made your friends are actually your enemies, and you will find out with time. Do you realize that Apostle Paul said, Henceforth, no we no man. After the you know what? He has experiences that he was not willing to tell us. Experiences of stabbing. I know you have had a few. And those people you you lavish your love on, and then they pierce you because they became your friends without a lamp. If you know how much. You need illumination. You will ensure that all the seven lamps with their full intensity of blessings are at work in your life. And your life will no longer be ordinary. <laughs> it shines on me. It shines on me. Your grace it shines on me. It shines on me. It shines on me. It's your grace. 
it shines on me it shines on me your grace it shines on me it shines on me it shines on me it's your grace It shines on me. It shines on me. Your grace it shines on me. It shines on me. It shines on me. It's your grace. It shines on me. It shines on me. Your grace it shines on me. Usadi mokori ya babalanto mina. Seli mokombre sali talia. Isai kompeli na si kobre. His grace will shine on you. He shines on me. He shines on me. Shines on me. Your grace. He shines on me. He shines on me. He shines on me. It's your grace. It's your grace. It shines on me. It shines on me. Your grace. It shines on me. It shines on me. It shines on me. It's your grace. Your way it shines on me, it shines on me. Your grace it shines on me, it shines on me, it shines on me. Your grace. Thanks for watching.